got a toast to freedom. With our angry balls. <laughs> what, so wait, wait, what, what do we got now? These are called angry balls. And what's in an angry bowl? It's angry orchard plus, um... Balls. No, uh, <laughs> fi fireball. <laughs> Alright, it makes sense. Alright, to freedom! Freedom! Okay. Hmm. What's your name, Bill? <sighs> Welcome to Anarchy Roundtable. My name is Joe. Uh, I'm Mike. I'm Daniel, also known as Christopher Cockwell. <sighs> what? He's not wearing the hat. I don't care. At least man. you're not wearing I the, have hat the hat today. In the other room. I appreciate. People, it, I bet not everybody in the audience knows you're trolling when you wear the Donald Trump hat. Though. Yeah. I was, why do you wear the stupid ass Donald Trump hat? And don't say to give us cancer. It doesn't give me cancer. I give me a headache <laughs> once in a while, but not well, cancer. If that headache can lead to you having cancer, I don't think that there's a correlation. There might be a what is that uh, word I'm looking for? Where it's not uh, causation versus correlation. Yeah, there might be a correlation, but I don't think there's any causation. To... All right, Mike, you brought a topic for us to discuss. History, uh, um, dangerous history podcast. Prof. C. J. did uh, an episode on what, the history what's... of American slavery. Is that the name of the episode? Yeah, the history of American slavery, part one. Mm -hmm. It's going to have probably five parts or so. He's on, he already did part two, but on part one, I was, uh, he quoted a guy, uh, wrote a book, um, The History of Slavery in America from 1618 to 1877, which... From 1608 to 1877, is yeah, that what you said? Something like that. All right. But, uh, 1877 was the part that caught my ear. Yeah, because that's after we thought slavery was yeah, done. No, slavery was still legal after, uh... Civil War and like the states that didn't actually secede, like Missouri and it's so legal of... today. Hmm. Well, yeah, taxation. Well, that's that's a whole other. We're, we're talking about chattel slavery to we be may, more specific. We may talk about that later, but yeah, anyway, we'll get into that. It was just uh, uh, he quoted this uh, guy from the book who said, you know, blah blah blah. Most of the presidents owned slaves and all this shit, but um, you know. The um, abolitionists didn't really get into it until about the 1830s, and, you know, they were considered fanatics. You're saying the abolitionists came around in the 1830s. That's, yeah, they that's when they started. Yeah, when they really, uh, like a small band of abolitionists, started speaking out about the 1830s and, you know, gathered momentum and ended up ending slavery, you know, 30 years later, I guess, 35 years later. So, Except for in those few places. But still, 35 years from the start of the movement... And uh, to the end, the of quote slavery. that uh, I forget the exact words, but the quote that he uh, quoted said that sounds a lot like you know they called them fanatics, and was that sounds a lot like modern day anarchists, you know? What they would say about us, yeah, 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 because you know we're going to bring down the government or whatever. Or ruin the... They said we Let's were be careful about our phrasing. <laughs> no, he's saying uh, they they said that the. Um... The radicals were bad for the republic. Yeah, people would say they were dangerous to and, the republic. Yeah, dangerous to the republic, which... In a technical sense... We though, are. No, no, but... Hopefully. No, but in a technical sense, they were... The, the, the hostility that they experienced, it was kind of legitimate, because that mindset did bring the republic to its knees with the Civil War. Um, yeah, and I see uh, a lot of... Uh, I. I mean, this, there's more freedom, more people that kind of see the light a little bit more than ever in my lifetime, wouldn't you say so, Dave, as a senior member of the panel? Well, um, yes. some, <laughs> yeah, some, 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 yeah, there's more ignorance, well, too, in a way. Um, <laughs> If you look at the very end of episode 14, we discussed this topic in greater detail, and I included a clip of um, um, Adam Kokesh. Uh, he gave a talk at the um, um, Midwest Peace and Liberty Fest number three in uh, Dalton last summer. Circle Pines. Cir Circle Pines Dalton, in Dalton, Michigan. Michigan. He gave a talk there, and um, he was talking about this, this exact um, topic, and I threw it in the, the clip because we were talking about it in episode 14 as well. He had us throw up our hands and said, how many of us were new new to the movement within the last five years? And like 90% of the hands went up and he got pretty excited. You should definitely check out that clip. 
Well, the volunteerist movement, uh, from what I've been reading up on, actually started in the 80s. There was like a little newsletter called The Voluntarist. And, um, D- describe what you mean by it specifically, because the anarchist movement is much older than that. So, wh- what exactly are you saying? Well, the volunteerist. Movement. Yeah, they didn't. It was it was basically the libertarians that had kind of figured out that um, the anarchist name had been completely sullied. So they created this own name, their own name called the Voluntarist. And there was a newsletter released. I think it was in the late seventies and in the eighties. I think it may have even gone into the nineties. But it kind of, uh, <laughs> it kind of, it kind of, um, kind, um, uh, it evaporated over time, and it's only because of, uh, I would argue, it's only because of Paul, and the last Ron Paul, yeah, the oh. last ten years where there's been kind of this um, resurgence. Yeah, resurgence. I watch, um, but what Anarchast sometimes. And the most common answer, and we've had this on our own show, the most common answer that he gets to the question, why are you an anarchist, or how'd you become an anarchist, is Ron Paul planted a seed. Obviously, Ron Paul's not even an anarchist, um, uh, officially. and But he tells people, look, the government doesn't need to do this, 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 and this. And then people like look at him like, well, maybe it doesn't need to do anything at all. I mean, that's how a lot of people get here. I've seen a lot of people um, seem to come from, like, Ayn Rand, too. They come from different areas, yeah. Yeah, I think Ayn Rand, I don't know. I would have said, you know, up until, I'm not sure now because of Rand, uh, uh, Ron Paul. But Rand Paul was, I believe, named after Ayn Rand. Yeah, I get that. But, I mean, too. some people, you know, don't like certain things about Ayn Rand. She was definitely a status, but... You know, nobody's perfect. <laughs> you know, but I, I think I she, yeah, I think she really. Uh, um, he just agreed with you, asshole. <laughs> well, Fuck we agree you. All agree on that. Fuck you. I'm awesome and I'm pretty, pretty big asshole. I know. Thanks. <laughs> we all know you're a pretty boy. Fuck off. With all the curly hair mm-hmm. and the girls. That's love my it. foot, Joe. <laughs> <laughs> it's your foot? You're his foot. Oh. I'll have you know, my feet are nowhere near his part of the table. <laughs> Excellent execution. <laughs> Anyhow, where was I? I? We lost the topic now after the stupid foot nonsense. So anyway, no, Ayn Rand was, um, was, uh, she kind of brought me to, like, being, uh, uh, I would say a hardcore libertarian, which I was for many years until I kind of always pointed out some of my inconsistencies, and now I would consider myself an yeah. anarchist or a voluntarist. And I think a voluntarist is a better word because who can argue with the statement all human interaction should be voluntary? I don't. Well, I will tell you, as I discussed earlier with uh, you guys kind of behind the scenes or before we even started, I should say, there are people out there that really do believe that uh, authority is necessary. and There are some. Especially when you start talking about with children. Yeah, like when the single mother I was speaking to a few days ago who sat there and said my children need to fear me, they need to uh, res- they need to fear and respect me. And when I heard her tone of voice, I was just in the kind of like, that sounds like biblical shit. Yeah, and like, when she says respect, what she actually means is fear. She's actually saying the same word twice in a row. Yeah, she says my kids need to know that I can, um, that I run their lives, and I was just like, wow, you are an authoritarian. And after that conversation, wow. I hung up with her. Part of it. Yeah. And then again, when you're, uh, I don't know, small children pretty much can't survive on their own without their parents, so... Well, Maybe. yeah, but I, I think it's... I don't, I don't really, I mean, you know, I'm more, uh, you know, peaceful parenting, but I also don't think that, you know, they're, you can, you know, they're your kids too, so... I but mean, that's the thing, what you just said was, they're your kids, implying ownership. Well, in a way, when they're, you know, two years old... Steward, I there's stewardship. There's, I mean, the stewardship and ownership I, are not I don't one know. and the same. I, I don't, I'm not prepared to uh, argue the intricacies, but it's not a, just a cut and dry issue. It's not like I don't agree that a two year old, 
you know, I don't, I don't think, I, I don't think it's morally okay. You know, even if it maybe technically follows the uh, NAP, I don't think it's okay just to leave a two-year-old by the side of the road. You know. No, and I, I, and although there may not be laws, or I would think that a common law or or something like that would, ex, you know, come out that you know if one of my neighbors left uh, their child or one of my you know cousins or something left their child out at the side of the road i would not have a problem with you know taking them and doing something to them oh okay <laughs> <to> never mind <laughs> well yeah i would take but I, I would say you know if especially if i cared about that child or you know, it's a gray area. But anyway. That's a sticky situation. I, I was just bringing it up that that's an argument people have. That's a whole episode right there. Okay. Yeah. Um. Another thing, you know, my sister and a couple other people have recently said to me that my sister said something to the effect that, you know, you know, the way this presidential stuff's going now where, I mean. Trump's going to make America great again. <sighs> yeah. No, that they're all. You just like to hear me sigh every time you say that. So That's bad. the only reason you say that. These people are all so bad that, you know, could. The, the time is right for change. I think she might have said, you know, it might be time for a third party, which who gives a shit about that? But. The Libertarian Party, right? Yeah, because they've made so much headway. Because the this. Libertarian Party is going to make America great again. <laughs> Because they're gonna fucking. I can already feel Trump making my life better again. I don't know. If, if, <laughs> if Jeff, uh, you know, if some of our friends have their way, the Libertarian Party was the uh, the end the party party. <laughs> in the in the government party party. The, you know, the Libertarian yeah. Party's been at it for decades. I, I, I don't know, really I, think I, that they're. Um, I got their emails, you know, years ago, and it was like. Every single email they sent me was like, oh, "Give us money, give us money, give us money." So I just, I just said, "Don't send me no more emails." You know, it's like, uh, you know, I I don't disagree with people that say the libertarians are statists, you know, and you know, to to varying degrees, some of the people I've met, you know, I've been to a couple of libertarian functions, and some of them are really way too far statists, and although a lot of them are pretty much are. Definitely anarchists are just in there thinking that's the best vehicle for them to, to spread the message. But, you know, with the, I think with the political climate nowadays that the, you know, I've always, it's always been a, you know, a choice of, you know, two e lesser two evils. And, you know, they just getting, like, candidates just keep getting worse and worse. I mean, well, this what's is our choices are most likely going to be Hillary and Trump. Well, this is the Those fall are... of Rome. Um, Leonard Reed wrote a paper called "The Fall of Rome and Modern Parallels." He made a um, a uh, addition to it uh, several, like a decade or two later. Um, he wrote the paper. I think it was in the seventies. Stefan Molyneux um, does a good reading of it, um, and in this paper, he talks about the process through which the state of Rome, the empire of Rome, fell, and it was basically the welfare state that took it under. Oh, yeah. And it's this, it's this momentum, there's this accumulation that happens over time. Like, you get this benefit, and then you get this other benefit on top of it, on top of it, on top of it, and eventually the state collapses under its own weight. And if you look at American history and you look at Roman history... A mere, they're, they're, they're like mirror images of each other. There's a lot of parallels. And, yeah. and, and um, American history is moving faster than Roman history. It's maybe about twice as fast. No, um, um, it took Rome probably even four times as fast. It could be. It took Rome yeah, seven hundred years to go from um, rise to fall. No, it took Rome um, um, fourteen hundred years. Yeah, I think we're. It depends you know, on things. There's, there's a lot of def faster, there's a lot of definitional stuff in the there. Past um, with technology and whatnot. So, um, what, what's happening in America is it doesn't, doesn't matter who's, who's in charge, um, of, of the executive branch of the government. The, the momentum that's built into the system that is a republic is to plunder thy neighbor in order to get more for yourself. Well, and then to feel righteous about that, um, like you see, 
all of this 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 envy for rich people that's happening no, well, now. Jefferson envy made, for and, and Jefferson what? I think it was Jefferson or Franklin made the quote, you know. It was Jefferson. Uh, I know the moment democracy. Once people can figure out that they can elect money their way, oh, they're they're going to start voting that way, and democracy dies. Oh. And well, mind you, I hate democracy. I um, All right for that very reason. That's why you hate it. Well, there's other reasons, but um, yeah. it's just yeah. Once people figure out that they can game the system and benefit themselves, that's that's the whole problem with yeah. politics in general. Is everybody. Want something for free? Yeah, and and so there are. There or they want to control political... other people's behavior. There's two two things there. Yeah, same thing in a way. But anyway, yeah, they, they want they want something, and they use the government to get it. And so everybody, there's all these special interests, and they just keep pushing in their own way, and it's just uh, it's just so perverted that it doesn't. There was actually a you bring up something, and I I really my buddy. He's kind of a techno guy. He's a tech guy. And he's got a bunch of lefty friends. Yeah. And they comment on his shit all the time. Which, and one of them The just, lefties are just so, yeah. so annoying. But one of them wrote something to the effect of um, healthcare is a right. <laughs> and I nearly lost my shit. I was just sitting there like <laughs> Dude, I've argued with this guy before. Uh, and he's a he's a it's strong triage, you gotta avoid that. But I was sitting there like it, you know what you're saying when you say healthcare is a right. You are saying that people you have the right to own slaves. Yeah, you yeah. have the right to make doctors into slaves. You have the right to make people or people who will pay for the doctor. Yeah, you have one the right or the other or both. You have yeah. the right to enslave somebody. Or, yeah, or other people. Yeah, and it. I I just sat there and I was like, the last time I had, I had an argument with this guy, I discussed the, the idea of violence that. When you advocate a law or you advocate a right that is not something that's, I would say, naturally given to you, um, you're pushing an agenda where other people have to do something uh, for you. And that they have to do it at the point of a gun. Right. And it's like it's lost on the left. It's yeah. completely lost on the left that the government is completely violent. This oh, brings up yeah. no. They, you're not going to get shot if you don't pay your taxes. I go. What do you mean? And I, I was, I've, you know, a friend of mine uh, at work. He's just so such a birdie supporter. It's, so this, I go. Yes, if you don't pay your taxes, they're going to shoot you. So this brings up. I <laughs> have a lot of these. I've been having a lot of these conversations recently because I've been added um, as an admin to this group. Great philosophical problems. Oh my 12, god! Twelve thousand fucking group. There's twelve thousand people in this group. And one of the more than one of the admins now are um, anarchists. So we're we're bringing some of this into there because I mean on our own pages we're in this bubble of other anarchists. So we're not really spreading echo anarchy. Chamber. Oh yeah, we're in an echo chamber. So I go into this group and I spread anarchy by talking about it. And one of the themes I like to continuously bring up is and I, and I always word it this way. I think this is the most effective way to word it. I say. This, this phrase, taxation is extortion, theft by threat of violence. And once you get somebody to see that, then they immediately go to all of the things that taxes pay for, you know, so roads, roads police, yeah, um, yeah. firemen, poor people, poor people yeah. all of the stuff that taxes pay for. Payment so for services. And, and they say, so you don't want these things. And then there's two ways you can argue this. And, and I go down both routes, but sometimes I'll I stop short on the one route. hysterically at them. Well, you can do that. <laughs> um, I'm, um, Sorry. So you can talk about how the free market can provide all of these things and this would be better and that could be better. But then what happens is you get pushed back and you start going back and forth. So then no. once that happens, then I'll say, fine, you want these things. You want there to be cops. You want there to be fire, um, fire department. You want there to be the roads. Fine. You want them. Do you think it's okay to... Thre take money from people at gunpoint to get things that you want. <laughs> That's a good point. I like that. I'm going to use it. Yeah. I'll concede their point. Fine. You want this. Do you think it's okay to take money from people at gunpoint to get things that you want? Well, there's some people that will say... And no. Uh, Molyneux made a similar argument. Like, 
do you think I should go to jail for not paying for things that you want? And I've met people that have actually sat there and said yes. Oh, yeah. So I don't, even though you present a strong argument. It doesn't always work. It definitely doesn't. I, I got into a conversation with somebody for a long time. Rarely, rarely. Who would rarely. simply not answer the question. However, there are 12,000 people in that group. And if your argument, you don't ever want to get into the situation where you have a 75 comment argument with somebody. You put that out there. That, that, that statement, that, that series of, of arguments, and then once it goes circular, then you just exit, and you let the other person have the last word, and then other people will read it. But if it's 75 comments long, nobody's going to read that. What about these comments by, like, um, Danny's hero, Christopher Cantwell? He blocked me. I know. I know, but you talk about him a lot. But I, I think he's because a well, because he supported Trump all of no, a sudden, but that, and, and he just puts stupid shit. He puts something so stupid. I at first it was kind of provocative. I thought about commenting, but it's just like, this is just retarded. I know he doesn't believe what he said. He just says just like racist, stupid shit just to be provocative and get people to. Uh, but what to he's, get his but name what he's doing? There. No, what he's doing is he is trumping. I just, I, I swear, I invented this new word. He's trumping. Trump just says stupid shit to get his fucking name out there, and people like Cantwell are just trumping the fucking, trying to trump the fucking freedom, you know, whatever. Well, I think the libertarian movement in general has a, it's, it has a right leaning, um, it, it, it leans right in general. Well, at least, I, I don't know. So. I mean, no, I think most, I understand. Most libertarians that I agree with, Came from a, a right, a right leaning because bit. they believe not in all of them. The part of the right that you're, you're well, there's one piece of the right. Economic, that, yeah. The, the the idea that, um, the, the, like he said, the economic stuff. Basically, the idea of the of free markets and and the, the power of that to provide wealth for the masses and your right to keep what you earn. Which is different from, because sometimes the left have this whole separate notion of your right to keep what you earn. Um, it, it sounds very similar in rhetoric when you put the phrase that way, but it's completely different. But um, all this left-right stuff is so phony, though. They just, it shifts depending on whatever, which way the wind's blowing or something. It's just all bullshit. There's no real... You know that Well, in politics, there's more. no left and right because it's all left. Um, keep making more laws. All of, the, I mean, the Republicans um, initiate just as socialist of policies as, as yeah, Democrats. Yeah, it's like I'm not a real, so uh, they're all leftists. Really. I'm not a real uh, when it comes to economics. I, I don't know every policy and all this stuff, so it might not be a hundred percent true. But it seems to me that the Republicans of today are so much farther to the left of. You know, the fucking hero of the Democrats, John F. Kennedy, was so much, he was farther right than, you know, than Reagan, the hero of the, of the right. You know what I mean? It's like, well, John F. Kennedy well, Ra to me, Reagan, me with Reagan was very right in his rhetoric. He gave he did beautiful speeches. Yeah. Not only did he give beautiful speeches, but he, he, it was well known. He really liked Rand. Yeah. But this phone that everybody calls an Obama phone... This started under Reagan. It's a Reagan phone. It's not an Obama phone. What's an Obama phone? It's a, a free, free phone, phone right, that poor. you get for being poor. Right now, it's a cell phone under Reagan. You got phone you know, service with your I landline. I couldn't stand Reagan but, when he first came out because he, you know, I could. He he just looked like a cheap actor, but he got a little better and he did say a lot of the right things. And I like some of the things he done did, but uh, so. I would say at the time, although I would have considered myself a libertarian, well, he gave, I still kind of liked the guy a little bit at that time. Well, he was likable because of the stuff that he said, but that's the whole the whole duping thing. Like, I don't understand how anybody over 30 can vote. It makes perfect sense to vote when you're like 22 because a politician gets up on stage and he says this and he says that and he says that and it sounds wonderful. Like, if you... Go on YouTube and listen to Reagan's speeches. If if you're into, if you understand um, free market economics, it sounds and, beautiful. And you listen to Reagan talk, it sounds beautiful. But when you look at the results of the Reagan presidency, 
it has nothing to do with those things that he said. And I was too young for that. I was duped by the um, by George Bush. I voted for him back when I used to vote. Wait, which and George Bush? <laughs> the second one. one. I, bo- I voted for him twice, I and then too. I think I voted for uh, McCain, and that was it. And, and I think I actually did vote for him like the first time out of like. Yeah. I, I felt I, I kind of felt bad because I had been voting straight Libertarian Party, but it was like. And whoever he was voting, running against, I hated them even more. I <laughs> voted for him Mr. because he thing. said things that made economic sense. And then he gets in the office and he doesn't. This is why I said what I said about being over 30. All of these presidents have these these, these campaign promises that they go. Um, Roosevelt campaigned. Uh, he said, um, Dave, you're you have to talk so much. You're kind of- <laughs> He, he said, I'm not going to send, I, I've said it before and I'll say it again and again and again. Your boys are never going to be fighting in those foreign wars as he was plotting to get the United States into World War II. I have said this before, but I shall say it again and again and again. Your boys are not going to be sent into any foreign war. Um, this is nothing new and it happens over and over and over again, president after president after president. And I don't understand why there aren't more people who get disillusioned, but it does seem to be happening more now. And it might be because of the information age. When's the, um, who's the first president and the last president you voted for, Dave? Put you on the spot here, Dave. I voted in the 1972 election. and uh, For Nixon? Who? Mondale? You know, I, I voted for George McGovern. Oh, McGovern. I don't even remember that. You guys are old as fuck. <laughs> yeah, enunciate a little more, Dave. <laughs> I was 20 in, in, the, in, the, in the amendment for allowing 18 year olds to vote was just came into effect that year. And oh, oh. Yeah. that's the last time you voted? That's the first time I voted. Oh, I said. Oh, so okay. when's the last time you voted? In 2012. Okay. Real, oh. Did you vote for Ron Paul? No. No. Who'd you vote for? Obama. I voted for George, for George Romney. I voted for uh, Mitt Romney. Mitt yeah. Romney. George, did you vote for George Romney too? <laughs> George, yeah. you know. He was the best Romney for he sure. Was, uh, he was a good. He was kind of like he was kind of like the Ron Paul to Rand Paul was the yeah, was, George Romney was a pretty uh, libertarian leaning. He was that. Yeah, I, I don't really know much about Mitt Romney other than I know that Tom Woods hates him. <laughs> his dad, George Romney, wasn't he the governor of Michigan? No, oh, that's probably why he, he was actually for a really good guy. I mean, he was very libertarian. I don't know if he was. I don't know that much about him, but I remember my dad supported him. He was a character. He he was a uh, he was libertarian sounding. This is what this is the whole topic of our conversation for the last five minutes. Well, this was back in the '60s. He was pretty libertarian by. Today's standards. He was as libertarian as should, all should I roll back? Oh, no. what, what I said about what Roosevelt said. He no. was a large. <laughs> I mean, Joe, you bring up an interesting. You kind of inadvertently uh, introduce something. I, what what is sexy about politic talk or political talk? Excuse me. Um, the politicians, the way they talk, is both parties one more than the other. They, they make this argument that you can be free to do what you want, and you can also get free pizza. Right. Yeah, and it, it sounds really sexy. Sexy. Mm-hmm. On the whole. The, I, I think in, Sarah Palin was like, uh, I don't know, the only presidential candidate I thought was sexy. Have you seen her like. porn? <laughs> no. But Claire Underwood, I'd fuck her, too. Yeah, Claire Underwood. <laughs> but I think she kind of like Sarah Palin fish doesn't sucks. look too good. Yeah, probably. I don't know. Don't. don't what I'm, I'm pull. I'm trying to pull up here, um, and I'll put this. I'm gonna put this clip right so in. The sexiest I'm gonna put this clip right in our video. So okay. I'm gonna play this now. This is George Bush during. This is George Bush during one of his campaign speeches, and this is just as ludicrous as Roosevelt, and it's a. Beautiful sounding speech. And at the end of this speech, George Bush won. George Bush won. He says some of the most 
awesome sounding, completely meaningless bullshit at the end of this speech. It's a minute and 43 seconds. It's it's worth every second right. of it. Um, I'm going to play it shut up except Joe. Over here. I'm the one who will not raise taxes. My opponent... My opponent now says... My opponent now says he'll raise them as a last resort or a third resort. But when a politician talks like that, you know that's one resort he'll be checking into. And I, <laughs> it's, it's beautiful rhetoric. He raised taxes. My opponent, my opponent won't rule out raising taxes, but I will, and the Congress will push me to raise taxes, and I'll say no, and they'll push, and I'll say no, and they'll push again, and I'll say to them, read my lips. No new taxes. I say it without boast or bravado. I fought for my country. I've served. I've built. And I'll go from the hills to the hollows, from the cities to the suburbs, to the loneliest town on the quietest street, to take our message of hope and growth for every American, to every American. I will keep America moving forward. What does it mean to move forward? Always forward. For a better America, for an endless, enduring dream, and a thousand points of light. <laughs> is what does that mission, mean? And I will complete it. That's his mission, I mean, and he'll complete I mean, it. I mean, have lighters at a rock concert. Right. That's a thousand points of light, right? Dave? It, 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 uh, a thousand points a of light. Read points my of lips. lips. <laughs> they made him eat those words because he's like, read my lips, no new taxes, and then he raised taxes. Well, and the thing is, though, is he said Congress will push, and I'll say no, and Congress will push, and I'll say no, and then I'll say read my lips. Congress pushed, and he caved. Um, maybe he didn't cave. Maybe he didn't care. Maybe he just said that to get elected. That's the whole thing. It's all bullshit. Bullshit. <laughs> <laughs> But he also didn't get elected the second term. But that's just because the economy goes down. The economy goes down, the president doesn't get reelected. That's taxes. just how it works. Um, I'm like, uh, like, read my lips. No new taxes. Um, uh, okay, I'll raise taxes. Yeah. Yeah. That that was uh, that was a little more blatant yeah. than even most politicians. I would love to see a politician. Well, no, I think Obama actually said we're not going to raise the debt anymore. Um, he didn't say it like specifically like that, but he sat there and said. You know, raising the debt is a burden on our children, and that's offensive to me. Yeah. And then he tripled our debt in eight years. He took 200 years of Wait a debt. minute. Our debt? Well, okay. Fair enough. <laughs> you know what I mean. You, you can own it. He took the taxpayer's debt. And, and it's our debt because, <laughs> barring some miracle, we're going to end up paying for it. And right. Our kids. And so he, he took 200 and some odd years, 270 years of Accumulated debt. Even his predecessor, his predecessor uh, George W. Bush II. Um, but he didn't do this. This is um, what I'm talking oh, don't about. Don't give me this no, shit. I'm giving you this shit right now. Listen. Dude, I pay as much as... Oh, okay, fine. The fall of Rome. It's the momentum of the system. The vast majority of the new debt that came on when Obama was in office was not from stuff that he did. It's this accumulation of the republic. This is what we were talking about at the beginning. No. Yeah, that's what all, all the bailouts and what the Fed did was debt accumulation in the span of eight years. That, that, what that is true. But what I'm saying, the, 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 the structure and everything that has built and built and yeah. built, it's exponentially growing the state. Well, that is... This process that's outlined in the um, well, fall I, of Rome and modern parallels. I hear a lot of Democrats stating stuff like, oh, you know, when Clinton was in office, we were making a lot of money, you know. No, they weren't making any fucking surpluses. Let, okay, go ahead. But, but what it is is, well, I think, partially what Joe was trying to say is, you know, these policies are, are already in place. Yeah, the, the debt tripled under Obama, but it would have probably tripled under... Whoever, who, Rimna, Rom, Rom, Romney, uh, Romney, whoever, it, or was, um, a McCain who ran before Romney. It doesn't matter. Um, the shit's already in play, and 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 for people to blame it on the Democrats or the Republicans, half the time 
isn't even really a real argument, even if you fall into that stupid paradigm of Democrats and Republicans. Yeah. Yeah, it, it doesn't matter who's in office. The state is going to grow. That's that's just the, the nature of it. And it's heading for collapse. We can't say when. I don't know. But I don't think it's heading for collapse. It, I think it's just going to keep getting bigger and stronger. And no, no, no. No, I mean, it's going to eat itself out from the inside. It's going to grow to the point where it becomes too parasitic on the population to be sustainable. Well, we already. I think we've already breached the point where the vast majority of Americans commit are not even um, political auto conolingus. <laughs> they're not. They're not really paying into, oh, I guess, the word. system or paying <laughs> off the debt. the The majority of people who are still actually functionally working, it's. I think. I and you can you can correct me if I'm wrong, or anyone can correct me if I'm wrong. But the way I understood it is that, um, on the whole, the amount of people paying in is less than the people who are getting paid through the government. We're, we're, yeah, we're the really, net, we're the really close to the people. threshold. And that's no, what I'm talking about with the collapse. We passed it, I think, like eight years ago or something okay. like we that. We paid it. Well, no, it wasn't. The amount know. of people receiving more from the government then. is greater than the amount of people paying more into the government than receiving. Okay. That We passed that, like, you know, Close to ten years ago. Well, I wasn't sure. I was. I'm open to correction. Well, and so. part of those people are the the retirees collecting social security. Yeah, fuck um, those people. <laughs> I mean, no offense, Dave. If you're receiving social security, are you receiving social? Security? No. Okay, cool. close. When are you gonna start? No, there's nothing wrong with the people who are taking <laughs> the social security. Yeah, actually, technically there is. See, no, no, technically, I don't think so. I think you should it do helps, whatever It helps the anarchist cause people, to bleed the state dry. I don't know whether it helps anything, but people are basically self-interested. And, and to fault someone for taking what is available to them is just disingenuous. No, but, no but what about integrity? What about personal integrity? Integrity? What Explain, integrity wait, wait, when, wait. when you're dealing with a fucking wait. government that stole from you your Explain entire life? Explain how it is... That it's immoral to take Social Security money from the state. When you paid into it, you're well, that, that, you, that, Yes, you have paid into it. But however, you understand right. that it's the money that's getting paid back to you is not money that you actually right. put in. No, it's, it's, not, not, it's not your IRA. No, it's it, not just, your 401k. Right. And just, just to explain what he's getting at here, because I've, I've done this many times for people. You pay into the government for Social Security, that money is gone because it was taken by the current generation of retirees. When you retire, your money's not there. Instead, they are stealing money from other people to pay you. That's what's happening um, when you collect social, social Security. Right. So, continue. And so, because of that, because it's just a, it's a transfer payment system. Ponzi scheme. It's not like I'm building up my savings account with the federal government. Right. It's I'm paying, uh, Dave. I'm just going to assume it's, it's literally a Ponzi scheme. <laughs> yeah. I mean, it's literally a classic Ponzi scheme. No, but that being said, so and I like Dave. You're an awesome guy. You're kind of a shitty. He producer. talks too much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just fucking. Yeah, with you. Yeah. <laughs> but but Look at the sad oh, face you oh. gave. <laughs> okay, I'm just gonna beat the old man down. So um, I got your back. I <laughs> I'll beat you down too. Um, I think we I don't think it. I don't think it's fair to ask the younger people to pay for the older people. I, what I think is... Of uh, course it's not fair. Yeah. <laughs> Nobody's going to argue against that at this table. Even, what are you, <laughs> some sort of an anarchist? <laughs> yeah. But, but where are you going with this? Because so far you haven't said anything we disagree with. Well, it just... You know, you are correct. You know, really <laughs> I mean, I've, like, helped make your point so far. But it, it does... You it does make... It. <laughs> well, fuck you. You Sorry. completely lost me. And you, I okay, let me, re, let me re-ask my questions to help you out. Okay. What is it that is immoral about, about taking Social Security payments? And I would extend well, it's that to say, basically, to any payments. The argument. Yeah. What is immoral about taking anything from the government? For example, I'm a 10% disabled veteran, and I get VA medical care, and they send me like 100 so and some dollars a month. on your taxes? 
to collect wealth. No, it's not an immoral. Stamps, well, okay. To get Medicaid. To you're you're accepting stolen money. Is it immoral to accept money from like like okay? Let's say somebody robs a convenience store, mm-hmm. and then they go into your store and they buy a TV set. Do you know they just robbed your neighbor's convenience store? Because I know the government already robbed my neighbor. Okay, so you know the government robbed your neighbor. Can your neighbor get that money back? In from the theory, government? In no. theory, no. Well, maybe. In theory. In practice, in theory, no. Well, in theory, maybe. How can they get their money back from the government? You can take it and give it to them. Well, no, no. So you're saying I should collect welfare from the government and then go over to people who um, get more money than than me and give it to them. Or if I'm earning money and then I'm also collecting VA benefits and I'm paying taxes and I'm See, getting the, them, then the it kind of balance is, out? Or should I not drive on the roads? No, no, no. The, you're, it, it's, uh, where are you? Yeah. I mean, Ethically, it just... It, okay, so if I know... If I'm Best Buy... And I know that the person who's buying a TV from me is giving me money that they've illegally achieved. Or not illegally achieved, but unethically achieved. Okay. As if I'm the business of Best Buy. Like maybe a cop came in there to buy something. It would be a piece of shit to let him buy anything off you. You're because. right. You can't sell anything to cops. No, no, I wouldn't sell you know, anything to cops. <laughs> but no, uh, no, honestly, no. Would you I sell really drugs would... to cops? Or a no, but postal worker. I I would sit there and honestly think to myself, you know, this person Teacher. accumulated their 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 money, their income by um, basically pointing Social worker pointing a gun to someone else's head. And saying, "I own you. I own you, or I own your wallet." Road worker and kindergarten yeah. teacher. That's all. That's all paid for through theft, and that is no. You have to take a payment for services. No, it's not payment <laughs> for services. This is what somebody said to me. No, it, it's 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 ethically. Problematic. If I want to, so this comes back to the thing where I, I was talking about the Stephen Molyneux quote. There are no moral choices in an environment of coercion. Exactly, and and I. Uh, so let my, me ask you: If Ford is selling police cars to the police department, even though Ford has been taxed by the federal government, let's say billions of dollars. Um. Exactly. Is is there's no clear this and this? There's no. <laughs> At the end of the day. What you need to do is advocate for the end of the state and work towards making that happen. We live in this environment where all of this is happening, and it's unavoidable. It's You cannot live without taking from the state. I mean, the how did you get here? You got here so, on roads. It's you, like... You, it, it's it's ev- always it's and like everywhere, that. and even if you try to take a job where you think that you're being paid privately, like my job, it turns out that the company that I work for leases buildings to the government. What? And not only does it lease buildings to the government, one of our tenants is a um, no, it's a um, defense contractor. But it's um, but the way the the government is, it's like that that growth they had on the War of the Worlds or something. It's just it's just everywhere. The tentacles. They're supporting you and taking from you, and every there's no way to avoid it, and everybody's got their finger yeah. in the pie or their. Another way I like to put this is imagine. There's no way to avoid it. And imagine for a moment that you are an anarchist or even just a capitalist, and it's back in the, during the days of the Soviet I'm Union. To James Weeks, capitalist. <laughs> Sorry. People have different definitions for the word capitalist. I'm talking about somebody who believes in the... This is important, actually, for the video, even. Free market. Who believes in the individual ownership of productive resources as opposed to the state or collective ownership of the resources. That's what I'm talking about. Um, Imagine you are somebody who believes that individuals ought to be able to have the right to go into business for themselves and own stuff. You're a capitalist. You live in the old Soviet Union. 
but you need some bread. And there you are in the bread line. And, or maybe um, you, you need some money. Here's another example. I'm pretty sure Campbell's um, very alive in Soviet Russia. Um, it's called the black market. Th there were black markets, yes. Um, but let's say you need money, and so what do you do? You take a government job. Why? Because except for in the black market, all of the jobs are government jobs. And for a lot of people, the only way to get money was to work for the government. And just like to get here, the only way to get here, unless you're wealthy enough to own a helicopter, but there's no place to land one out here, so the only way to get here was to take a government road and... Well, Jesus provided. There is a helicopter pad at the... Uh, oh, perfect. We could have taken a helicopter, but we at, have enough money. At the Border Patrol um, office. At the Border Patrol <laughs> office, so you'd have to land it on government um, um, property. Oh, so, shit. there you go. Just identify um, the location. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, Dave, you you probably have something to say. What do you think of all this, Dave? Well, uh, you, you talk about the uh, the impending failure of the state, and at the same time, you you kind of think that that's going to be a be all and end all. That somehow that that's uh, going that that's going to make things better, and. Uh, I don't necessarily think so. I think it'll probably be, you know, worse. replaced by something else. By another state. That very could well be, could that, be. That probably will be. Yeah, you bring up and an important be, point. And it could be worse than what, what we got now. And uh, so I think what so, we need to do. And that's why we do build, Anarchy Roundtable. Is build a market for freedom. Yeah. This, this is why we do this show, Dave. Because in order, because the, the, the impending collapse of the state is coming. I don't think it is. It might not be in our time. Okay? I don't think the state will collapse. There may be our economy will collapse and we will yeah, but be supplanted or co-opted by the, another state. Hold on. It's the, the, let me finish. The impending collapse or weakening, at least, of the state, the current state, is coming. And then you bring up these possibilities that it could be replaced. Both of you have brought up the possibility that it could be replaced by another state. But the whole purpose of this show and the entire anarchist movement is to educate the public about this issue so that when the state gets weak, people yeah. don't try to replace it. Um, you look at what happened in Eastern Europe when the states collapsed there. trying to there. create a market for freedom. Yeah, we're trying to create a market for freedom, a desire for freedom, however you want to put it. If you look at what happened in Eastern Europe, they looked at the smaller states of the world and discovered how much more prosperous they, what they were. They looked at, like, Hong Kong. They looked at the earlier days of the United States, um, like the early 20th century, uh, maybe not necessarily the 1700s that early, but... Uh, or the late 19th century, yeah, they looked at the, the the success of small government um, at providing for a rapidly growing economy. And even China looked, I mean, they're still pretty fascistic in China. They went from communistic to more fascistic or kind of a blend of the two. But they realized that they Which needed... Which are the same thing. Yeah, well, they're, the same they're, they're, they're two, two types of socialism. Um, they realized that they needed to allow some more free range um activity in their um their livestock the people of China because it makes for a growing economy well just as people have reformed states based on those lessons we're trying to create this lesson of anarchy and um free markets so that when the state gets weak again and it will People will reform society based on these lessons, which are even better than what they've done in Eastern Europe. So, um, at least that's my goal. What can we do today or this week to uh, bring us closer to that goal of a stateless society? So, well, 
Oh, go ahead. He- I'll, I'll interrupt. James would probably advocate Molotov cocktails. No. I don't think, I don't think that's the, <laughs> that is not the solution. The, the, we're yeah. in the educational phase. This we're is not, where we are. We're not, uh, I'm not personally, and this is not, I, I would be a, if I was personally advocating violence against the state, I would not say it out of self defense, but I don't think that's the answer either. I don't no, me either. I don't think it's I think immoral. It's dangerous I just to, think it's dangerous and not. Well, I think it's dangerous, plus, I just don't think it's the, the well, way to go been, move that way. I would say. Problem. Violence against the state would probably strengthen the state. Yes, it would. It, it, would, yeah. uh, it, would, yeah. it would give them an excuse to crush you. And that's what and I'm saying about. Unite, what, unite people against you. Like what? Joe was saying, you know, the imminent collapse of the state. I don't see that. I don't know if it's I, imminent. It's. I don't soon. see. I don't see. I, I hope that you know what we desire will come about, but probably a more likely scenario is the state's gonna. Maybe they will implode economically or something with yeah. like that, but they'll probably be replaced by a stronger state. Well, and this mechanism. is this goes back. This we're getting circular here. This is why we're spreading the message of anarchy so that it doesn't get replaced. But, or I mean, because and then that's when I brought up the, the 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 lesson of Eastern Europe when they did replace the state, they replaced it with a much smaller state. We don't want that. We want to go with an anarchical solution, and that's why we spread the message. Well, the real problem with it is that uh, okay. Um, in philosophy, there's three ways of attaining knowledge. There's a uh, three ways of obtaining what? Knowledge. Knowledge. There is authority. Um, I, uh, I wouldn't say religion, but it's a, it's akin to religion. I can't think of the term off the top of my head. Ritual? Uh, no. Repetition? No. Um, faith. Indoctrination? Faith. 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 And um, then there is what we would call science. Now... The Why? thing is, most people tend to be governed by the... So by authority, you don't mean expertise. Appeal to you, authority. You mean... Um, Here's the hammer. Hammer. Yes. Because there's two kind of definitions yeah. for authority there. And so um, it's really hard, and it's very critical from a psychological point of view. And I'm no psychological expert by any means, but um, a lot of people who... Uh, express the need for authority have been influenced uh, growing up under the delusion of authority being um, authority. <laughs> well, no, it, it, that, that, that it should govern their lives. Your parents own authority you. Authority is right. Your parents uh, control you. Well, and look at this other definition of authority that you keep using. Because if you're the... Let's say you're the authority on digital cameras. No, no, there's a difference. And there's two different that, definitions, no, that's, and I want to I want to highlight this. Where did this other definition of authority come from? I think which it's one is first? The term which expertise. which, which uh, definition is it. older? If you're the, it doesn't matter. Because the both definitions stand for different contexts. So yeah, to say, you know, let's let's go back to. Uh, you know, that Facebook thing the other day with James. Yeah, maybe there is a definition of capitalism that is what you said it is, but... But that's not what we're talking about. But that's not what we're talking about. it. And yet, there are two different definitions of authority, and just because we don't like that one definition... Doesn't mean it's legitimate. I I wonder which one is older and and how these definitions came uh, about. You know, of anarchy, you know, there's the... (sighs) You know, craziness and blah blah blah, or you know. Well, the anarchy the one is an excellent point because the older definition of anarchy is as the, um, the, the the ancient language that makes it up says is without rulers, and then I heard it click. Um, the government um, came in and or or and then media came in and redefined anarchy. Yeah. It's a derivative definition. But yeah, it, even th- what they're saying is if you have no rulers, it will be chaos. Therefore, anarchy means chaos. Yeah, so it was root, co-opted. So yeah, so the root definition of anarchy is no rulers. 
people believe that no rulers mean chaos, so they say no, no rulers to mean chaos, so they say anarchy is chaos, but if no rulers doesn't mean chaos, then that derivative definition of anarchy is false. Well, the, now what I, my point would be that um, even though the the most likely um, chaos definition or the anarchy is ah people throwing bombs, it's all crazy chaos, whatever, whatever you want to call it. That was probably brought about by the government and media. It was also brought about by people actually throwing bombs, which no, didn't help whatever, the situation. But no, but I'm saying, whether, however that, that definition was brought out as a, a political thing or whatever, to, to you know, it, it might have been their way of, you know, fucking with the anarchists. But yeah. either way, that definition... Has taken root and that definition holds. Yes, but and that's it's part, also the way you, yeah. The, but it's just the way you, you, you frame things and define your terms. Kind of, that's how they control us is by just changing right. the whole paradigm. The, so you you look at it in a totally different way. You can't even look at it. In a absolutely, way because the, it's the so, state so is a master of manipulating language, and that's why we call this show well, Anarchy Roundtable. Because fuck you, <laughs> we're saying no to your manipulation of this language because any word that we use to describe ourselves as people who believe in the voluntary uh, interaction between people will be co-opted by the state to mean the opposite. So we're you know we're saying fuck you. Yes, that, <laughs> exactly. Well, so. Uh, and that's that's why I'm sticking to this word, and I'm not willing to to let it go, um, because if we switch to voluntarius, then they'll make that mean something bad too. It's like all of the words to mean people with an IQ less than eighty. We've had idiot, moron, retarded, and um, now there's developmentally disabled. disabled. And, no, no, no. There's and, differently and, able. Differently able. All of these words because. Because the it retards. gets co-opted by people making but fun see, of people. But see, I've never heard a retard complain about it. <laughs> That's bullshit, you know? The point is, and, and there's, there's lots of situations where this comes up, and I'm holding to this, this, um, this word anarchy because the root word of anarchy is without a ruler, and all of the other definitions that come are derivative of that. And I'm saying to be without a ruler does not mean chaos, and that's why I stick to the word anarchy. Well, it it I think and I, it does not mean to be without rules. I do I right. do agree with you, Joe. But there is a complication when you have the red ants who. Um, who You're talking about the anarcho-communists. Not only the anarcho-communists, but the syndicalists. What exactly is a syndicalist? I don't they're, know if I understand They, they that. believe that everything should be unionized. Unionized. So, unionized, yes. So, are unionized, or is it like um, co-ops? Is that what... I, I think they're going for co-ops, but they... they the, Cooperative ownership. It's similar to communists. I know that. But... There are the the language they use is uh, everything should be run by a union. So it kind of sounds like cooperative. Yeah, it's very similar to communism, but maybe a different but, flavor. See, my point is, and in, in a way, I, I agree with uh, James is uh, anarchy without adjectives. I think if if you truly are, if you truly in an and that's kind of why I do like the word voluntary. So if you truly believe that all human interaction should be voluntary, then the only real distinction, the only real thing you really need to figure out is how you define owning property, you know, and in and, and, and the uh, physical, pro you know, the land and stuff is probably the hardest thing to, you know, there are variables where you could define that, but if, you know, if you say that you don't believe in rulers and that people should be able to do what they want as long as they're not infringing on other people, then to say you know how things are going to shake out in the end, I 
I have no problem with unions because oh, you, unions are if fine. they're voluntary and yeah, if it's, if it's a voluntary interaction, a union is fine. The unions that we have today are not voluntary oh, interaction, no. and then that's what the, the problem but with it's, them is. It's so far, it goes both ways. Yeah, in the other way, I don't have any problem with cartels either. Yeah, it's as long as it's all voluntary. Right. Well, then by definition, I mean <laughs> you're saying to me that you don't have much of a problem with the Fed. Which is a cartel. You know, well, uh, no, because there's violence behind the Fed. Well, it's well, not voluntary. Oh, the Fed it's is, violence backed. I'm I, uh, saying I if two to companies want to get together and set prices. Colli- collision. Co- collusion. Collusion. As Sorry. long as it's voluntary and there's no guns involved, there's no force, there's no violence, there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah, but well, you understand but that. But the Fed has guns backing it. You. The legal tender laws. You have are, to use. You them. have to use the Fed, and and that's not the same thing. If fifteen banks wanted to get together and set prices, that well, that's well, fine. Joe, I'm but not, Joe, isn't that kind of against the idea of uh, the free market? If you no, have collusion, it's not against the free market because there's always a situation where somebody can if act outside forced. the cartel. It's not forced. It's not forced. Force. No, no, force. Even with you're, the you're OPEC cartel. Upon who the, are you? If you're you're, if you're, you're no, imposing, then it's you're forced. you're imposing upon the the the, well, pe- the consumer. And just to be clear, a union is a cartel. Uh, yeah, I know that. Okay, but like I uh, to imagine, you know, um, BP and Shell colluding together in let's say a totally free market. Mm-hmm. What this is, and I'm not, you know, I'm definitely very removed from the ancoms, but it. It, it seems like you're giving a little bit of credence to the idea that corporations are inherently evil and we, well, should, like, we should regulate them before no. they collude. The thing is, is I think, in a way, I would... I don't think corporations are inherently evil, but I think the way things have shook out over because the last we, hundred years because or Because we have more, this fascistic environment this fascist, that we... Yeah, they're, yeah. They, they're basically... They're, they're in a way, they are inherently evil. They're using the guns of the state in order to operate, and this this com- this brings up the whole Almost every Malinolian public quote. safety law is is a law supposedly to to keep you from drinking bad beer, well, what, but what about or having messed up glasses imagine, or, or or carpet that smells bad or you something? You can't imagine, and let me be a little bit of a devil's advocate, advocate here. You can't imagine that. A company could attain such market power that it could kind of set the game. Absolutely not. Maybe, really? but absolutely well, not. Well, no, and no, Tom let, Woods let, has let, a story on his show. I will try to find this and put it in the show notes. It is a perfect example. So we talked about, about it on our no, show no, before. I know, okay, I know, but what about what's what, your point? Then? No, no. Uh, what's I, your point? I, I guess what I'm kind of getting at is, what about um, let's say natural monopoly. Uh, there, there's a possibility for that. You have the only gold mine in the world, or whatever. You have the it only uranium mine in, in the, the world. world. <sighs> so, what's your point, though? Well, if there's two companies that share maybe a a site that contains uranium and they're colluding, I don't know about what's your point. Monopolies. Well, we need uranium to run our. Nuclear. What is the point? What are you trying you, to say? You, what's uh, it's, on or what is your question? It's not necessarily. It's not violence, but the fact that there is the capability of having such market power is. So, are, do you propose something, or what is? No, the no. But I can understand. What I'm getting at is, I can understand the ANCOMs. Um, I understand uh, it. skepticism. I understand it more towards the paradigm of, of they are they're seeing what we have today. Yeah, I know. I completely. I, I they're seeing what we have, and and they don't understand that this is not free market capitalism that we have. No, I by not. our definition of free market capitalism, this is nowhere near that because, like I was. You know, saying a minute ago, all these laws that they have, almost every single law that's a consumer protection or, I mean, probably 90% of the laws out there are to, to protect to markets for corporations, you know. Every food safety law and all that, those are really pushed by the corporations to keep the little guys out so they can make it more expensive and harder for the little guys to operate so they can corner the market but and make it, more money. But it really doesn't address... 
Um, and look, I'm not, I really, I understand all your points and I agree with them, but my, my contention is, or not my contention, my, uh, my devil's advocate is how do you address in a free market system? Uh, you have a free market. That's how you no, address no, no, no. it. No, that's how you address it. You have a free natural, market. no, natural, uh, monopolies. I don't know. I guess you can go shoot them. <laughs> that's violating the nap. Yeah, but it's going to happen. I mean, if somebody gets too much power in a free society, other people are going to kill them. Well, I don't know if that's right or not, but that's what's going to happen. No, I. but that's a violation of private property then. Right? Yeah. I mean, uh, Joe, okay, so Joe, I kind of need your input here because we're both financially savvy what do you <laughs> fuck you what what do you think what do you, what are your thoughts on um I just natural shoot them. natural uh, natural monopoly you own let's say an oil well and it's a shit ton of oil underneath your underneath. that's not a natural monopoly can you find a natural one give me an actual example of a natural monopoly N- I, you know what i can't you know, what, you know what no you no, no no you can't do it no but well but, What's going to happen is there's going to be can I claim other... O- can I claim ownership of the moon? There are going to be no. other... Why not? You can't defend it. it. That's my point. You can shoot them. That's what I just said. If but somebody then, claims well, okay, they have so this monopoly... Okay, so that violates private property. No. If I'm the first one to land and claim the moon... <sighs> this is like a whole other show <laughs> about property. We've, we've touched on this he just said. He just said if somebody has a natural monopoly... I can't that, yet name what an example of an actual monopoly is. He's going absurd and I talking about the moon. Eventually, somebody's going to shoot him. Well, that's a violation of the NAP. Yeah, but it's probably going to fucking happen. I mean, yeah, but there that, is no, that there the there is no, no lib pair. There's it's not, not just gonna about be a not being able to defend it. Paradise. It's not going to be perfect. An emergent order would never allow you to claim the entire moon. Okay, but by that same argument, though, you could sit there and say, well, I claim this little piece of land. Because you can't homestead the moon. No, but by that same argument, you you could sit there and say to me, I found this little plot of land in the forest, Mm -hmm. and I'm claiming it. And what you just said to me is that what we can do is a group of us can come at you and... We want this little plot of land, which is eminent domain. Eminent. No, I'm not talking about a group. What I'm saying is, it's not just about defending. You haven't homesteaded the moon, okay? If you can go up there and bring, like, a whole corporation of people that completely use the entire moon... But well, why does that have one corporation? It. Okay. A why can't it just be one... The moon is just okay. a parcel of land, is it not? It is... A very large parcel of land. Okay, so that is so beyond. It doesn't, doesn't, it doesn't really s- subtract from my argument. How you can't just go up there and plant a flag on it and say it's yours. Why not? You have to homestead it. That's okay, so I build or, one or, home or, okay, who, and who, I claim who the says rest. He of it. has to homestead. Okay, so what, where is this, that this rule is, come this from? This isn't. This is an excellent <laughs> point. Where does that rule come from? I mean, when that's my have, point. That the, when the you real. Have, no, wait, let Dave. Yeah. You How do you have, define property at this Dave, point? Okay, no, but Dave. but part of the thing is that when you get to a certain thing, when 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 the government breaks down, the government doesn't decide how things work. Somebody else has to decide how things work. And we're making assumptions that things are going to work this certain way. That you cannot exactly. stick a flag in the moon and, cu- and claim the moon. What? Who says you can't? Well, we're making this assumption based on thousands of years of human history. In the well, process of never been on the moon, like, well, that has, has never really worked out. That very has well. evolved many times in many different cultures. Uh, are you saying it's common law that that that's, that would be the case? I mean, what's yeah. I mean, honestly, which common law do we go? I, we go by is, English in, common in, in law, your, by French in, common law. And you're right, Dave. Or do we, I'm and, only I saying mean, that it's it's highly probable, and that, that is, this is how it would work out. That is my okay, point okay. about. Well, that's, that's, but that's my point about left versus right. Anarchism is the real argument is if you truly believe that all human interaction should be voluntary, then the real argument is how do you define property? How do you define homesteading? Is how can you, you know, how do you, which level of absentee ownership 
is acceptable and which level is not. It's going to be have to, you know, be decided by common law, and it's going to be different in different areas, and it's going to evolve and it's going to change. And 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 nothing. It, 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 there is no lib pair. There's not going to be any libertarian paradise. We often on this show get into speculation about the way things would work in an anarchist society. And the reality is, we don't know. Well, no. And, and, and I, I have I a think... strong, almost, almost religious, almost not a religious belief, but I have a strong belief that. The market will provide. The market will provide. We, we, that's not even religious. That's empirical. The mm. question is, how will it go about it? Because there are millions of billions of people. And the answer is, who the Creating fuck different ways <laughs> that the market will provide. But we can empirically say that it will. Um, I think it's time to wrap up the show. Hold on. Hold you on. have another point. And then I'm going to ask Dave a question. So, um, okay. So, I, I guess I have two questions. Um, a, if I have accumulated enough money, or I can accumulate a significant portion of land, then what is really the functional difference between me owning land on Earth and me owning the moon? Beyond that, and... None. Yeah. This is the finer... No, no, I, I know. It's I know. the finer points of what yeah, will yeah, emerge yeah, yeah. in a language. Okay, I know, I know that. Um, the... Uh, second point is um, we have to I don't know if we have to but it seems like this is a thing about uh, people who are against voluntarism or um, anarchism or whatever you want to define it as um, it seems like we are constantly having to defend our positions in terms of how would this work how would that work how would how yeah. Yeah, and it's really <laughs> Good it's point. honestly, it, it's very exhausting yeah. because um, you don't know. Well, I know we don't. <laughs> well, and I say that I, here's what I I just had this conversation today. Somebody said to me about the roads and the police and all this stuff. You know, how is this going to work out if we get rid of taxation? Because I point out taxation. I say this. I say this all the time. Taxation is extortion, theft by threat of violence, and people say. How are we going to pay for cops? That that's what happens. So, what I said to this person was, you know, to ask one person this question goes against the entire idea that um, markets will will provide this the, this kind of stuff because there are billions of people who are going to come up with different solutions to that and if you believe that one person has all the answers then that one person might as well be the state because they know the right way to do it and then i said how do you think some of these things might work you know, I flipped it around and I said, you know, I'll answer your question how I might think it would work. But before I do that, how do you think some of these things could work? And, and it, and it kind of gets, gets them to thinking. And then I throw in the question, do you think it's okay to take money from people at well, gunpoint um, to get things that, I you think because want, that you want? This is a question that we get almost daily. Anytime we talk yes. to someone, I mean, I, I've got this question a couple days ago I mean, you get it hundreds but of times i think i think what we need to do is figure out uh we need to change this a big part of the discussion of you know anarchy and and um volunteerism which really is a volunteerism it's kind of like the free market it's like the ecosystem i think we need to we need to find a way to sell the free market to yeah. sell to ex to get people. No, to, I, don't, I, don't I, I think no. I think I kind of. There's multiple I have a concept, angles here. I think we all have a concept of the free market of of a market system but working and believe in it. Part of the reason why we accept anarchy so well is because we believe, we believe that we will be wealthier and healthier and more prosperous. We believe that the market the will provide a down. better solution. The well, free market free will market. provide a better solution. And I think that absolutely that we need to really focus a big part of this discussion as anarchists, as volunteerists, towards selling the market system, period, yeah, the free I would, market. I would only say that, um, and Katie is going to probably find this a bit amusing because we had a discussion about this, um, 
To temper hope. The what? To temper. To hope. temper hope. Yes. Um, I've seen the market uh, in terms of like technology deliverance, and uh, mind you, technology is one of the least regulated. Um, because industry. the government is a slow lumbering beast. Yeah, yeah. But it's one of the least regulated markets. And by technology, you mean regulated. new technology. I mean uh, Silicon Valley. Yeah, new technology. Yeah. Um, uh, I am not. I am hopeful of the, you know, the free market. I am hopeful of all these things, but I have seen abuses within the free market. Uh, if you look at um, religion, if you where look, is this free name market? One, yeah. name, name one. No, well, I would say religion. Name, is no, free. name one abuse in the free market. I would argue that religion is a free market and is very abusive. I don't think so. I would. Religion say. is the original form of government. I You're buying say. something that is. So you're so saying religion costs. is fraud. Yes. So there's a fraud that's happening on a mass scale through religion. And people buy books, and they What's buy your point? They buy crosses, and they buy little uh, spheres and crystals that think that have that's, spiritual. That's energy. a whole other topic. I don't even know. But how. no, I mean, it exists. No, you're right. And it, it's not point? even really regulated. There's a lot of this stuff. Like this, people believe so much nonsense in Drugs the world. Drugs are evil. Um, if we have a free market, no, um, um, I, like homeopathy. Um, the, 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 there's so many things like the people who let their child die because they ha had meningitis and they were treating them with maple syrup. Um, there's, there's Is that home homeopathic maple syrup. There's yeah. maple syrup and sugar and like vinegar. Or yeah, shit. they were giving them stuff that wasn't drugs. And mind you, I it doesn't it doesn't it doesn't detract from my viewpoint that the free market could deliver better. But but the government hasn't ended religion. No, and so what's the issue here? No, no, I'm not saying it's so much the government. It's just this delusion that, you know, um, I wouldn't say it's delusion, but I, I would argue that it, it. I have seen these pastors and so forth that, you know, buy my book on how to get wealthy through Jay, Jesus. The Trudeau guy. Yeah, and I, that's I, not I, even religious. And I sit there, natural like, cures. They don't want you to know about. Yeah, and I could, don't buy that book, by the way. I, I do uh, wonder. <laughs> it sounded intriguing to me. Yeah. I do I wonder. I don't fall for that shit. I too do often wonder either. if the, I didn't buy it. Though. If the free market <laughs> can really, I guess, um, crush um, nonsense. It can't no. crush it, but it can. No, but it's uh, not. It can it's the best <laughs> I mean, way isn't to the combat end of it. Isn't the end of the day to find the truth? But yes, and and you need to have a free and market. Can the for market the truth. really do the that? The market is not going to crush nonsense. There's going to be all kinds of nonsense snake well, oil salesmen out there in the free market. But what um, possible way could be? What possible way to combat nonsense is? It, what is better science. than the market? The government science is great, but government you got to have a free market for yeah, science. Yeah, free market. So. It is time to, to wrap up the show. But before we do that, Dave, you've written down a number of notes I here. Like, I hope we can what? talk about the I want to explore. Fest. Liberty Fest. Oh, yeah, I yeah. want to explore the Liberty free market Fest. again We were supposed week. to talk about the, we're all members of the Midwest Liberty. Peace and Liberty oh, Fest, yeah, August 26th through the, the last weekend of August. Last weekend of August. Um, we're is all uh, helping to planning members. We, we, we're, members. We're, we're planning members of the event, and it, you can find Mike's information about you can find information about the event at MP worship me. <laughs> That's a joke. <laughs> Go ahead. He said, "I'm the leader," ahead, so I said, "Worship me." It's I'm not the leader. Joe, you're the leader. <laughs> Mike is a central planner, though. <laughs> <laughs> Joe's like, shut the fuck up. He's gonna probably cut this part. All right. All right. You can find information. <laughs> yeah, sorry, sorry. Just, that was you were just like. You can, 
<laughs> it's a democracy. Yeah. Yes, it is. We're you all... can find information about this event at mplfest.org. It's going to be a great time. Last year, we had over 100 people show up. We're all anarchists. We have a great time. We have discussions like this around campfires, it's around peaceful. breakfast tables. It's peaceful. It's in the country. There is a lake to go swimming. There is a sauna if night. you want to go there. There is um, a sauna. There is oh, a sauna yeah. by the lake, so you can sauna lake, sauna lake. And we're having the, and the first annual anarchist ball. We are going to have an anarchist ball at the and event. There, the future Rothbard could be conceived could, there, could, because that's where the Rothbards, Murray Rothbard's parents uh, met at an anarchist apparently. ball. Apparently. <laughs> and also, there will be some anarchy round tables that Not take place that. at the event in, in collaboration with... Uh, Liberty Under Attack Radio. Oh my God! Is that they're going to be there? We're, yes. We're actually okay. So here's the deal. We're going to have Hopefully we're gonna one have a Liberty we're gonna, Under Attack Roundtable. We're going to have a, <laughs> we're going to have one episode of Liberty Under Attack on its own, and the rest of the nights or the days uh, we're going to have Liberty Under Attack with you, me, whatever. Um, it's going to be a roundtable mixture with the Liberty Under Attack. From what I understand. Yeah, a combined show. And also... Um, but I want to see if we can introduce that piece of shit, Michael Fien. Oh, oh, come, come on. on. And Lou. Because Mike Fien is supposed to be why, there. Why with, are you going to... Let, let, because he blocked me because I fucking made fun of him. Let's not be derogatory. I'm we not want calling. all the guests we possibly can. I, am yeah. not, I do not endorse this message. <laughs> <laughs> I don't care if you endorse it or not. All right, so no Dave, we... Michael Fien, and, and you also group Lou in there yeah. with that. Yeah, you Lou's did. One Lou of the Lou. No, Lou is respectable. Mike is oh, just problematic. Stop just Danny, stop Danny. it. Keep your oh, just okay. Stop it. Okay, but you let, can talk all you want about Christopher me, Cut Cut Cut. What's his name? You suck at this Cuckwell. Now I, I can only you, think of Cuckwell because that's all you ever call Cantwell. him. Well, Cantwell. That's no. Uh, what a horrible last name too. By the way, Cantwell. Joe, Can't Joe, you, you were part of this conversation, and I think you were too, Mike. Um, as we are administrators of the the fest, so to speak, um, there has been a slight discussion on. Um, Oh, the flags. No, oh. fuck the flags. Um, I'll bring the flags. But um, <laughs> there has been a slight discussion on the concept of maybe creating a, uh, a general fund for people who want to attend, oh. but may not necessarily have the financial means. I think that we should just leave that to individuals. Um, that would probably be a... Well, yeah. we could do a GoFundMe. Absolutely. I mean, you, you can do that yourself. Oh, um, thanks. If you want to. All right. All right. So I thought you hated the poor. I hate roads. Just um. stop it. All right. <laughs> We're, I like Michael Fiend. It's okay by me. Uh, and if you don't like him, it's he cool. blocked me. <laughs> so you're just bitter about being blocked. Come on, man. Okay. Because I called him out on his Dave, bullshit. Dave, you wrote down a number of notes here. Is there anything of note on there that you Not would like to time. highlight? Not at this time. All right. <laughs> You are another not. another Davis, topic. Though. In the last show, we did a lightning round um, where we answered one question in a kind of quick manner. What about ending the state? Do you believe would improve your life or the life of people in society? Read my lips. Take all the time you want. No new taxes. <laughs> To think about it. I think it will improve for future generations. It's not necessarily my mind. So if we ended the state, how would it improve future generations? He wants to get a little technical with you. Just just a quick answer. Like what 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 do you think would be great about ending the state? That that's all I'm asking. What what is one thing, not the whole answer, one thing that okay, would be no better? Taxes. No taxes. All right. Here we go. I think our life would improve almost immediately because the market would provide shit that we don't really can't imagine. So I don't know what it'll be, but I, I think the market, if the market was opened up, that uh, things would get better. Unimaginable improvements provided by 
the billions of people coming up with things to do without the hindrance of the state. I guess it's my turn. Okay. Um, I thought we weren't going to let Danny talk. Oh. You, you, you <laughs> voted. We voted? No. Asshole. Uh, no, um, I would hope that uh, people, and particularly uh, children, would stop believing in this concept of um, authoritarianism. Absolutely. Because I think that, I honestly think that's what has crippled us I think for should, the longest time. I think you should tell all of them. I was, that. <laughs> and, and, and for me, I was just listening to this podcast the other day. This, You're always listening to podcasts. I listen to them all the time. This guy started a photography business. He was flying drones and taking uh, pictures, and he listed for like 20 minutes all the things that he went through with the government. It was unbelievable. So for me, the answer is the freedom to do business unencumbered. So, so what's the your, business uh, of having voluntary reaction or interactions? Yeah, with, without massive... Which is business. Massive intrusions. Like, this guy got... This guy went and got a um, pilot's license, a sport pilot's license, in order to fly a drone under 400 feet to take aerial photography. Wow. And that was just the tip of the iceberg of what he had to do. It was unreal. And I just, when I was listening to that, I just thought, I have to get out of here. Where, it is sad that the Where are you going to go? Some place where you don't have Singapore. to get a private... Pilot, pilot's license to fly a stupid drone 400 feet and take a picture of a damn building. Well, um, if anyone's interested, uh, Puerto Rico seems to be the Singapore of the United States, as mm. Singapore is to China. Um, but no, no income tax, no federal income so, tax. So, um, should we give a little bit more detail for the fest? I mean, I know we um, got the dates. How about... What do you what, what did how, did you like the fest last year? Any uh, I comments about the it? fest? I was completely unprepared. Um, I will tell you all right so now. There are no, I was not. There are no vendors like you know like meat we, trucks or whatever. Well, Wait, we there some wasn't, vendors. but the year before we had a lot more vendors. So please feel free to be a vendor. Yes. Or we will, uh, uh, email us. We'll probably set someone up. To we have unregulated them. vending at the fest. Yes, you can use my canopy as a means to sell your shit, but it's not a huge canopy. So, um, no, I, I liked, I loved the fest. I wanted it to last longer. Honestly, I would love it if it went a week long. I understand that's not typically within people's vacation schedule, but um, it was a great time. It was a great time. Um, the only, the only complaint I really had was we're in a, a time of year in Michigan where it starts to get a little humid. So, um... Or a week later, it'll be a little nicer, hopefully. But you never know. Yeah. Hopefully it won't be like a Liberate RVA where it's all It was too cold shit. down there. No, it was cold. I froze my... Really? It's I mean, right supposed to be later there. this oh, year, too. Than shit, it was kind of, actually, it was kind of cool tonight. I, I forgot my blankets. And I don't remember it being... If people remember it being hot at the last fest, I don't. No. Wait, neither. what? It was great. No, we I didn't hear what lake. you said. I said, day. people remember it being hot last year at the fest. Oh. It was warm. I don't remember it being no, hot. No, the weather was perfect. It was this perfect past weather. So, before, I think. Bring, um, you know, bring your food. Uh, honestly, just... This is real camping. This isn't like bullshit with vendors and all that type of stuff. It could be, shit. though. Hopefully it will be. I I don't want to oversell something. No, but I'm, I'm just saying the year before we had quite a few vendors. So if you want to vend food or anything, you know, let's, you know, we'll post it. We'll, we'll try to have a little more heads up. And then, you know, July, August, we'll say, you know, we have 20 people who are going to sell food. We'll know, okay, maybe I don't have to bring as much food. Personally, I've brought way too much food. <laughs> you always bring too much food. I bring too much food. And on that note, let's say goodbye to the audience. Well, I'll say goodbye to the audience. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs> <laughs>